click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, welcome to the subject of machine design one. Right now we are in module number three and we are learning the designs of those elements, machine parts which undergo or which sustain static loads. In last lecture we have finished with the design of turnbuckle. In today's lecture we are going to look at the design aspects of power screws and important formulae. Power screws are mainly the screws which we have already learned in computer aided machine drawing but they are used to transmit the power. Now there are many ways we can transmit the power and for that screws are mostly used wherever there are heavy loads associated. So if you look at the uh, basic design of a screw it is in terms of threads. So a screw if I draw the cross section may have this kind of cross section. For time being, for the sake of convenience, you have considered square throat or square profile of threads. So these things are called threads. We already know them. Right? There are certain relations which are associated. There, this is called the pitch, the distance between two consecutive points on the thread, the similar point on the thread. This thing, if you remember, is called depth of the thread. Sometimes it is designated by letter H also or H, right? And the mean of this is the mean diameter of thread. Now we know that the diameter which is associated with this particular length is called is core diameter and the diameter associated with the outermost length is called its outer diameter, right? Now based on this, if you see this properly, whenever the applications of threads come into picture, they actually sustain the tangential loads in the given directions. These tangential loads, they actually transfer to the from one body to the another body and that is how we use them for the power transmission. So basically power transmission is done by means of rotation, but somehow these threads have perpendicular thread profile to the rotation. Rotation happens in this particular uh, direction, in this particular plane and the thread profiles are exactly perpendicular to that and that's why the loads actually act perpendicular to the thread profile. A thread walls we can say, thread face we can say, right? That is how the screws are used for power transmission and the, all those screws which are used for power transmission are called power screws. That's the basic definition it has. But screw itself is not the mechanism. There comes different mechanism where we have to consider nut also because when a screw is coming is coming into picture, it's a kind of bolt which has the external thread. To uh, to have it uh, into something some body, we always have to have some nut profile, and that's why along with screw nut always come into picture, and that is how the external threads will match with the internal threads and power transmission do take, does take place. So the important aspect of failure we are going to look at. So failure, let me repeat students, whenever we need to design something, we need to look at the functioning of that particular object and in other way we need to look at the failure mode of that particular object and then important relationships that we are going to look at for this particular kind of screw thread or screw power screws. Now as we go ahead, there are different stresses which we need to look at. Now due to the axial load, now we know that they actually carry axial load right along across its axis. That's a different thing that gets distributed on the uh, uh, thread profiles and then faces or thread but they actually undergo the axial loading. Due to axial loading, compressive stresses do induce inside power screws because they have to sustain the loads from both the ends. For example, in many cases, power screws are used for the lifting of objects. So in that case, the screw, let us draw a schematic of it. That is how your square threads are shown, are given power from the lower end and they have to lift some load. As the screw rotates, it changes its height in this direction and along with it, it carries the load. So in short, the screw is subjected to compressive loading and that's why 
we need to consider its compressive failure so axial load actually gives it the compressive failure now the compression is basically given by this formula we all know this right so compressive force is equal to the load divided by the area of cross section it was actually like this load axial load of course you can say axial divided by the area of cross section which is pi by 4 core diameter square so based on which we have found out this formula but there comes another thing which is called slenderness ratio if you look at this diagram properly the screw actually acts like a column right because columns are those members which carry compressive axial loads since it is carrying compressive axial load it falls under category of columns or struts of course the applications are very small so in that case there are two possibilities slenderness ratio so if you remember the topic strength of materials columns and struts we had seen two aspects or two different ways a column is studied and that depends upon the slenderness ratio the slenderness ratio gives us the idea about the relation between the length of that particular column with its cross section area so in that case if the slenderness ratio which formula we are going to look at is greater than 100 in that case i must consider some different theory as that of the theory when i am considering when it is smaller than 100 if you remember there are two proposed theories a theory by euler and a theory by Rankine. so the euler theory is used or it is base suited for the columns which are short in height but the Rankine theory is used when the columns are larger in height if you remember that so in that case slenderness ratio plays a major role so if the slenderness ratio is smaller than 100 if it is smaller than 100 in that case we will consider that failure is because of compression only or failure is because of the crushing only crushing compression goes in line with each other so if slenderness ratio is smaller than 100 will go for the compressive kind of failure but if the slenderness ratio is greater than 100 we must consider the slenderness ratio and formula associated with it which is nothing but the buckling so buckling criteria we have to consider for the failure in that case so in that case we have to find out slenderness ratio first which is given by the ratio of length of the column actual length of the column with the k factor that is radius of gyration and the radius of gyration we know that is associated with its moment of inertia and the area of cross section in this manner so this formula we already have learned we need to remember it for the buckling aspect moving ahead the buckling load will be given by this particular formula now let's remember this particular formula we use for the if this slenderness ratio is greater than 100 so in this formula the generalization is done in terms of n where n is the factor for the end condition the, again if you remember we used to have different end conditions conditions like both the ends either hinged or one end free another end hinge or one end hinge other end fix or both the ends fix in such cases when the conditions are given in these terms the behavior of the column or strut changes and that behavior is changing along with the end conditions and that's why factor for the end condition are to be considered as we move ahead with the solving of numerical we'll consider those end conditions and find out the buckling load so let me quickly revise that based on the slenderness ratio we have to decide whether it is smaller than 100 or greater than 100 if it is smaller we will go for compressive failure and this is the very straightforward formula but if it is greater than 100 we will go for the buckling failure and this is the formula we are going to use for it the next possibility is shear failure so based on the given end conditions we are going to use this formula and find out the buckling load if it is failed. next is shear failure which we are going to consider now shear failure it happens because the torsion right the power screw will have the rotational motion and that motion will be converted of course into linear motion of the load which is being lifted but the shear criteria comes because it is rotating and which is the sim simple formula we are using only thing is we are going to consider the core diameter as far as the shear is concerned so shear failure also we need to check for the given problem of power screw now there comes the bending stress now bending criteria is used because there are teeth associated we know that since it's a column we are going to consider for buckling 
but bending happens when the load acts in transverse manner now if you look at the cross section of the thread properly on one side this is one teeth of the screw there are many tooth like this but you are considering only one now in that one case let us say the total load acting is f the total load it's say f now when this f acts on number of threads let us say that it acts uniformly so that an individual thread the load will be divided equally and let us say that the divided load which is acting on one teeth is ft so in such case if you see that the axis of thread is in this manner and the loading is perpendicular which is called again transverse loading the transverse loading will induce the bending of that particular teeth right so in that case in of course higher semester you will be learning about the bending of teeth of uh, uh, gears in that case also we are going to use the same relation so using this particular thing we need to find out the bending criteria also so we need to consider bending stresses we know that maximum bending is given by the load divided by the area uh, sorry load divided by the perpendicular distance let us assume that the total height or total depth of the thread is small h in that case i'll assume that the ft is acting exactly at the center of this or exactly at the middle height or mean height of the thread depth and that's why i'll consider h by 2 as the perpendicular distance so maximum bending of this particular this or this teeth is equal to ft which is the divided load into half the height the whole height is h half the height will be this particular distance right so that is the maximum bending moment but we need to consider bending stresses and we know this is the standard formula for bending stresses where sigma bending will be given by m and z relation where your z is nothing but i divided by y i is its uh, area moment of inertia y is the distance of perpendicular distance from the neutral axis or the y is the maximum distance of outermost fiber from the central axis neutral axis this already we have done in saw now for the kind of uh, threads if they are square threads they have already found out the relations of course for different kind of threads we will be using different uh, relations for i and different relations for y for in your syllabus power threads mainly are in terms of the square threads and that's why the standard relations we have are y will be given by thickness of the tooth divided by 2 and i will be given by this particular formula pi by 12 it's dm dm is nothing but the mean diameter so dm is nothing but mean diameter into tq now using this two relations we'll find out the those value and we can use this relation i have to find out sigma bending and hence sigma bending once we put all these values in that formula will be given by this Now you have liberty to remember this three formulae, sorry, four formulae. This two and this two, or you can remember the one single formula that will that will connect all the parameters like tangential load on one tooth, then the height, the mean diameter, and the thickness. So bending stress on thread root considering equal on each thread. what does the mean meaning of this this is the bending stress that is exactly acting at the root of the thread this is nothing but the root of the thread now when the loads act on them on these power screws the highly you know highly susceptible area for the failure is nothing but the root of that particular thread right because there is change of area the area which is present at this level and the area which is present at this level are completely different and that's why this root is supposed to fail first and that's why we need to consider this particular factor for the failure of the root next thing is the bearing stress the bearing stress of course again the empirical formula we are going to use directly but it is nothing but the ratio of the actual force now let us say it's just f it's not ft divided by number of threads right or for the whole portion you can just use the letter ft divided by this particular area of circumference if you see this is the circumference and this is the height 
so it's the circumference into the height up to which it is running so this is what the bearing stress is given by then comes the shear stress at the root again root is susceptible to two bending as well as the shear so as far as shear is concerned we again have the same formula we'll say it is just f by n where n again is number of threads or for this you can just say ft divided by pi dc into t now instead of h now we have t as the factor because h will be considered in bearing stress as well as t will be considered under shear stress the next formula let's move ahead towards the steps of formula now in the previous slide we went through certain formulae and how are the failure criteria but in this step we are going to look at the important formulae or the steps which are which we are going to use for the design the very first uh, step is design load as usual we'll consider some higher margin and find out the design load then we'll go for the material selection and then we'll go for the factor of safety selection the second step itself is nothing but a design of the screw the main part again we will assume very first thing is the tensile failure and considering tensile failure this is the standard formula we have where we will find out the core diameter of the screw now from psg we can select some standard screw threads right so of course we when we will be solving the numerical will come across this point but from psg we can find out or we can consider some standards square thread available and with that designation or notation we will get standard dimensions like nominal diameter of that thing then pitch of that particular thread and the core diameter the standard core diameter so you have to match the value which is obtained with the value which is available and that is nothing but the selection of that particular square thread the next step is nothing but the finding out the major diameter so major diameter is a diameter major so we'll say mj maj then it is the core diameter now if you again remember that particular thing particular cross section the diameter which goes up to this is your diameter major the diameter which comes up to it is your diameter core and the diameter line between in in between them is called your diameter mean so once we get the values of major and the core we will go for the diameter mean so this is what the finding is because we consider the mean diameter for the action of the force on the threads then comes the shear failure criteria we know that shear failure will be given by this formula and this formula is an empirical relation which has, which has been derived for square thread specifically the derivation is not in this scope that's why we are not going into the detail of that particular thing but all of the parameters are in terms of the dimensions of the threads and how they are related let us look at so the shear failure for that the failure criteria or the torsion will be given by the load ft which is acting on one uh, one part of the thread into the mean diameter divided by 2 into this bracket aspect where l is nothing but length which is equal to the pitch so l is equal to pitch so that one value we already has then mu is the coefficient of friction associated with the given application with the given material so that's also a standard value which we are going to select from psg rest of the dimensions we already have so using this particular thing we'll get the value of t moving ahead with this you have to combine for the combined stresses now guys it's a real life problem of power screw which does not always carry only one kind of stress it may carry shear stress crushing stress even uh, compressive stress bending stress buckling stress at the same time and that's why we have to go for the combined stress so there comes an important failure theory which we already have covered in module number 1 failure theories or theories of failure so one of them is the principal maximum principal stress theory so the theory says that we have to consider the combined loading and the major combination or major combined loadings are your compressive and shear so by means of stress principal stress theory you already know this formula principal stress 1 and 2 we know that there are two principal stresses a major one and a minor one so major one and minor one will be given by this relation where major one can be found out using plus relation in this and minor one using minus relation between them 
all other values we can find out figure out from this particular formula so if the induced value is greater than allowable value definitely is going to fail but the, if the induced value is smaller than the allowable value this is going to sustain the given loading let's move ahead to the nut design now we know that there are two important aspects one is your bolt or the actual screw and second is your nut design so nut design again depends upon the empirical formula where axial load or f load is given by this particular relation where d major is the major diameter and core diameter so difference between them we have to take so where n dash is the threads in contact with each other right so this data we have to uh, select from the phd or the data will be given so using this see this particular thing is nothing but the projected area which is which is there for the failure so pb is the uh, pressure maximum pressure and n dash is the thread in contact threads in contact also crushing failure now nut for nut we need to consider two ways failure this this particular thing will give us the value of say pb or any diameter which is unknown but in this case crushing failure we must consider the crushing failure criteria again depends upon this n dash into this particular projected area into sigma crushing is the only difference earlier parameter was this which was pressure or force in terms of pressure or force that will be given but in this case crushing failure we need to consider the crushing stress then we have to consider the buckling of screw once nut design is done we have to look at the buckling of this screw for there the length the total length of the screw that is required for the functioning is the height to which the lifting should happen and height of the nut so there should be two parameters the lifting height and the nut height so based on the slenderness ratio we need to find out the slenderness ratio again if it is greater than 100 or smaller than 100 we will go for the failure so failure we will go either for if it is greater than 100 we will go for buckling or if it is smaller than 100 we will go for the crushing or compression so that is how the design of main parameters is done apart from that there are certain parameters which dimensions only mention when we will be solving this problem we will draw a detailed diagram and we will look at how these parameters are important so these are some of the empirical relations which are given which we will be solving thereafter in next lecture we will be solving we will be solving a numerical based on the design of power screw where we will divide the lecture into three parts because it's a lengthy procedure we'll select this we'll select some material ideal material we'll go through its values elastic properties and then we'll check out its safety conditions thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video please subscribe to ekira thank you